If you've been following Elite Running at all over the past year or two, then you know there's a controversy over a new product that's called Bicarb. Along with Super Shoes, Bicarb has been attributed to the recent assault on world and NCAA records. But does it really work? Or is it just another overhyped product like Beirut just was a couple years ago? Well, that's what we're going to explore in this video. We're going to look at the research and we're going to break down what exactly bicarb is and what it's theorized to do. Two, we're going to look at the research and why it's only now becoming popular. Three, we're going to dig into the more recent scientific literature to see if there's any merit in its effectiveness. And four, we're going to provide practical strategies that you can use if you want to try it. My name is Jeff Godet, and I'm the founder of Runners Connect. I'm a former professional runner, and I've been coaching adults and recreational runners for the last 15 years. My writing and lectures have been featured in Runner's World, Competitor Magazine, and many, many more. So join with me today as we dive into the research on bicarb. So what exactly is bicarb? Well, bicarb is a common shorthand for bicarbonate of soda, which is almost more commonly known as baking soda or sodium bicarbonate. Yes, this is the same exact white powder that you usually associate with as a leavening agent for your baking. Interestingly, while it's only recently gaining popularity, bicarb loading has actually had a long history in sports science, generally and in running in particular. That's because sodium bicarbonate is a salt that breaks down to form sodium and bicarbonate in water. This makes the solution alkaline, meaning it's able to neutralize acid. Thus, taking a bicarb supplement was originally thought up as an almost comically simple solution to the problem of fatigue. If lactic acid causes fatigue, then taking bicarb will neutralize that acid. Now, while we know that the problem of fatigue and running is a lot more complex than just lactic acid, the surprising thing about bicarb supplementation is that it actually worked. Well, it worked on paper. So let's start by taking a look at the early research on why it worked and why it quite didn't. A wave of positive results from the studies in the 1980s and 1990s show that taking a high dose of bicarb just before a hard anaerobic effort, like running a mile all out, improved performance in sports like running, swimming, and cycling. But after this initial wave of interest, bicarb became something of a poster child for a supplement that worked in the lab, but whose real world side effects were so irksome that it just wasn't gonna work. You see, the trouble with bicarbonate is twofold. First, it is a strongly alkaline supplement. So just like baking soda reacting with vinegar, Bicarbonate relaxes with the acids in your stomach, changing the chemical environment of your digestive tract. Second, the traditional dose of bicarb was very large, sometimes as upward of 25 grams, which amplified the gut disturbing effects. The result is what physiological researchers delicately call gastrointestinal disturbances, which really just comes down to nausea, flatness, vomiting, bloating, and diarrhea, all recurring right before you're about to start a big race or workout. A professor I had in graduate school once told me stories of some of the early work on bicarb loading in swimmers who would leap out of the pool after their tri time trial just to make a mad dash to the bathroom. Now, let's talk about why you're probably currently familiar with bicarb, which is the Morton bicarb system. On account of these side effects, bicarb was not widely known outside of sports science research until 2023 or so, when a sports nutrition company called Morton launched its bicarb system, a new take on bicarb loading. Now, Morton already was known for sports drinks and energy gels that claim to use the hydrogel compound to speed up carbohydrate absorption, and then they applied that same technology to bicarbonate. The launch of this new system, plus flashy press releases and media spotlights claiming of up to 80% of track athletes in the Paris Olympics would be using it, created a huge amount of buzz around bicarb and in general. Now, the Morton bicarb system doesn't claim to enhance the effectiveness of bicarbonated cells. All it does, according to the company, is make two tweaks to reduce the gastrointestinal problems that have normally been associated with it. First, instead of a raw powder, the bicarbonate is pressed into miniature tablets, resulting in less surface area to react with the stomach acid. Second, the Morton system uses a hydrogel that congeals into a thick gel-like consistency on contact with acidic liquids. The hydrogel aims to further slow down the reaction between bicarbonate and stomach acid, delaying the release of bicarb until it gets into the small intestine. Okay, so now we know how the Morton system works. Does bicarb itself work according to the literature? When it comes to bicarbonate loading in general, the science is fairly clear. For events lasting about 45 seconds to eight minutes in duration, you can get a performance benefit of a few percentage points, 
roughly on par with the effects you're going to see from something like caffeine. That was the conclusion of a 2017 meta-analysis that pooled data from 25 different studies on bicarbonate loading, which found that similar performance benefits for a bicarb to caffeine. A later review from 2021 came to similar conclusions. For short to middle distance events, where fatigue is dominated by peripheral fatigue in the muscles, which is caused by anaerobic energy production, bicarbonate loading exerts a small but significant effect on performance. As for Morton's bicarb system specifically, there are understandably fewer reliable studies. In total, there have been three papers that have tested the Morton bicarb system, though all of them are in a male and male cyclist and two are actually repeat studies on the same athletes. In terms of efficacy, the Morton system seems to work as well as traditional bicarbonate systems. According to a 2024 study on 14 cyclists who completed a 40 kilometer time trial. Compared with placebo, the cyclists covered the 40 kilometer distance 1.5% faster, which is in line with the research on traditional bicarb loading. This study found no significant difference in gastrointestinal symptoms between the placebo and the bicarb group. But especially in a small study, the absence of evidence is not really the same thing as evidence of absence. The study might have just been too small to see an effect on stomach crumbs, and the paper did not directly compare traditional bicarb with Morton's system. Luckily, we do have one study that did do a direct comparison, which was a 2024 paper which looked at 12 scientists who completed a progressive exercise test either after taking Morton bicarb or a traditional bicarb supplement. The paper found significantly lower gastrointestinal problems in the Morton group, but similar blood levels of bicarbonate, suggesting that the bicarb was indeed making its way into the bloodstream while using the Morton system. That same research group separately published data from a subset of 10 of these 12 cyclists who returned for two sets of two by four kilometer time trials after they completed taking either the Morton bicarb or the sodium chloride, i.e. table salt supplement. While the cyclists did improve their performance with the bicarb supplement, this experiment also isn't quite what we want, which is a head-to-head -head three way comparison of Morton, traditional bicarb, and a placebo. So now let's look at practical strategies for using bicarb for runners. So does Morton's bicarb system live up to the hype? Well, the truth is we don't really have enough data, but there are zero studies on Morton's bicarb system in runners and zero studies on women in any sport. That said, here's what we can infer from the current research. First, bicarb loading as a general strategy does have solid evidence to support its efficacy in events lasting from 45 seconds to eight minutes. Second, you can probably argue that the benefits would carry over to championship style sit and kick races lasting up to 15 or even 30 minutes if you're an elite runner. But for longer races, such as the marathon, any benefit is far less clear and there's been real known research that has shown that it will improve your marathon times. Longer events also leave you much more vulnerable to the well-known gastrointestinal side effects that come along with traditional bicarbonate loading. If you are competing in short distance events and you want to try the Morton system, the usual golden rule applies to everything in racing try it out in a workout first. The usual research-backed protocols involve taking 300 milligrams of bicarb per kilogram of body weight within one to two hours of your workout or your race. In all likelihood, runners vary in their degree of susceptibility to gastrointestinal problems. So you want to test it out to make sure that your body's reaction before you want to take it on race day. As for VO2 max and short threshold sessions, you're likely to see performance benefits during your workout. This may even translate into race results if you've been able to work out at a higher level, but the end impact on your race might actually be minimal. Again, this is something that I think research could really dive into to see whether those performance benefits in workouts can translate into races. Now, I hope you enjoyed this look at the research on bicarb. Let me know in the comments if you've tried anything like bicarb before and what's been your experience. Thanks for watching with me today and we'll see you later.